Make the most of your organic gardening experience with the world's first self-growing planter. All you do is add soil, seeds, or plants and walk away for the rest of the year. Our planters will germinate your seeds and grow your plants. Torpedo Pot's microbial organic growing process is designed to give plants incredible texture, refreshing scent, beautiful colors, and delightful flavors. Torpedo Pot is fully automated and uses over 95% less water to grow a lot more nutritious food. Check out our website, www.torpedopot.com, and order yours today. Yes, yes, welcome back to the African Diaspora News channel. My name is Richard Sudan. Thank you for tuning in. I need you to like and subscribe and to support the channel and spread the word. So there's a story I want to bring you today about a video which I saw circulating online a couple of days ago. And the video, I think, speaks volumes about the nature of anti-black racism. And of course, you know, the nature of anti-black racism among every other community. Let's be clear about that. Um, you know, other communities that are non-white practice anti-black racism, of course not all, but it's clearly prevalent in literally every community you can imagine. Now the video in question is of a Hispanic construction site worker and this guy basically hung a rope and a noose in the area he was working as a joke to his black colleagues. And you can see in the video, the guy is even laughing about it uh, when pulled up on the fact he did it. Take a look at this clip. You put that there yesterday? Yeah, I put it because That's not a good joke to me. I'll play with one guy. That's not a good joke to me. Let me take a picture of that nose. Hold on. Hey, hey right, man. Hey. I put it yesterday. Hey, you? Racist. <laughs> you put that there yesterday? Yeah, I put it because That's not a good joke to me. I'll play with one guy. That's not a good joke to me. So as you can see, this guy's defense was, it's just a joke. I mean, words fail me with this kind of stunt. Unfortunately, we're used to it, but it really shows you the thinking, the psychology that many people have been indoctrinated with regarding anti-black racism. Now, if this was this guy's idea of a joke, I can only imagine what his more... Um, his more open views are that are, according to him, not humorous. If putting a noose, a noose and a rope, a symbol of hanging people, a symbol of violence, a symbol of oppression, enslavement and persecution, if this is a joke to this guy, you know, you can only imagine what his private conversations might have been amongst his families and his colleagues. And I don't know, there's a few, few things to unpack here. You know, I wonder... I wonder what happened to this guy. You know, I wonder if there was any action taken against him by the construction site owner. Uh, what would have been the reaction if there was a symbolic gesture uh, speaking to the pain, the murder, the enslavement, the persecution of any other community? Um, what would be the reaction? What would be the reaction if a similar gesture was made towards Jewish people or LGBT people? or whichever community you might imagine. I would imagine there would probably be a massive uproar uh, by many people, probably on social media, and you'd probably hear about it. But of course, anti-black racism is fair game to a lot of people. Black people deal with a completely double-edged sword regarding racism, you know? Um, black people are the only community in the world who literally face anti-black racism from every other community, um, including non-white communities. Uh, it really shows you 
it really shows you how, how deeply embedded it is in people's thinking and how normalized it is. How normalized it is. How twisted, how twisted does your thinking have to be to think this kind of thing could somehow be a joke? I mean, notwithstanding all of the history of racism, but particularly the last year or two, you know, regarding all of the all of the talking about white supremacy, all of the examples we've seen uh, televised and reported on. You know, this is, uh, this is twisted. This is, this is sick. You know, this guy should be sacked from his job. He should face some sort of uh, arguably criminal proceedings. You know, this is on a construction site. So people will say, well, you know, people, this is just banter. This is just jokes. It's not a joke. And if, if, can you, I mean, can you imagine in another working environment if this happened? You know, you know, I, I would imagine this guy is probably still working probably still working imagine how you'd feel if you're one of the black people working on a construction site and someone puts a new a noose and a rope there um as a joke you know and the the, the sick thing is like regarding other anti-racism struggles among other communities you can look at every single anti-racist struggle in the world and black people have contributed to those struggles informed those struggles help those struggles and um, black radical, um, you know, anti-racist sort of uh, thinking has even been borrowed and used by other anti-racism campaigns. You've even had Irish revolutionaries that have kind of borrowed, been inspired, been contributed by, by black people. And yet anti-black racism is at the forefront, you know, of every corner of the globe and of course of course there are genuine allies of course there are people among those communities that stand shoulder to shoulder with black people too but there's no getting away from the elephant in the room um that you know the idea of a, a black and brown coalition you know is a lovely idea but it's an idea as long as this uh violent racism continues to just be normalized among all communities you know we we hear about white supremacy a lot and we should hear about it a lot but we don't hear as much about the other communities that have assimilated into that thinking and that system oftentimes in a desperate bid to avoid racism themselves it's, it's really twisted you know in south america in the caribbean you have people so desperate to be white that they literally kind of out white certain white people at times this it's unbelievable you know this guy is a hispanic construction worker and his continent was also pillaged um by white supremacists but i guess you know in a lot of the places where the spanish and the europeans went a lot of people rather than fight against the power a lot of people psychologically really bought into that thinking uh to the point that regarding communities they should be supporting should be identifying with they can turn their backs on like in this example and i don't know the origin of this guy it says he's hispanic in the video but in places like mexico you've got a history in mexico where you know the evidence shows you that the the olmecs and other civilizations black people black african people were literally at the foundation of a lot of these cultures too a lot of these people share an African ancestry and yet they can sell out and they can turn their backs on their own ancestry and they can happily practice anti-black racism you know it's the same reason why you have a lot of these black and not black people but you have a lot of uh, some black people maybe but you have a lot of brown communities that voted Trump you know you had the example of um, again I, I want to preface this not all but many or some in communities like the Chinese American community supporting, you know, guilty of anti-black racism. Um, you've seen all the examples online of, you know, black people being abused at different commercial outlets run by Asian people. But then you saw the story a few months back of um, certain sections of the Asian community donating hundreds of thousands of dollars to groups like the Proud Boys. This is a a psychological sickness and illness um, that has taken people over and kind of removed their ability to think logically and, and sane. And you know, I really believe that all these people, 
the, the, a lot of these people identify as white. These people that carry out these uh, um, these acts and have this kind of white supremacist thinking, and that's how they should be treated. But the irony is, the irony is, a lot of times, uh, these people will never really be accepted uh, by white supremacists. Some of them will. Uh, some of them will be accepted in their bid to become white supremacists. But a lot of them are really viewed viewed as like mascots amongst the white supremacists. The white supremacists laugh at them. Um, but this is a this this video that we just saw is sick. It's twisted. I think it's violent. I think the sort of thing should be criminalized. Um, I'm interested to know if this guy faced any sort of punishment uh, for what he did. Um, I really believe that if there was um, any other community on, represented on that um, on that building site, if this gesture was done towards the Jewish community or the Asian community or the Arab community or the Hispanic community, people would be up in arms. People would be up in arms and they should be up in arms when it's anti-black racism we see too. But of course we know there's a, a, a double standard. But anyway, let me know what you think about this topic in the comments. As ever, I appreciate you tuning in. This is the African Diaspora News channel and we will see you next time. Are you tired of the violence? Tired of the injustice? Police brutality, rampant discrimination, lack of gun control in this failed by a socioeconomic experiment called America? Or maybe you need a break from the relentless grind and want to regain control of your destiny, your wealth, your health, and your purpose. Diversifiedgame.com has the right course for you. Prepare for my first trip to Africa. Looking to reconnect with your roots, start a new business, or just a fresh start. Africa, AKA the motherland, is waiting. Don't let the Chinese and the Mazungus have the fun and also take over the motherland. From Cairo to Mombasa, from Dakar to Cape Town, Africa has something for everyone from business opportunities to the most amazing people, safety, leisure, and landscapes. So opportunities abound. It is time for the diaspora to reconnect with their roots. Time to reconnect with the birthplace of humanity. Africa is the last frontier. Get your head in the game and reclaim your legacy. The writing is on the wall. Babylon is falling. Give up the stress, grind and violence inflicted on our people on this continent and prepare for a journey of restoration and joy by connecting with the land of your ancestors. Check out our new course and kick off your adventure at diversifiedgame.com. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store.